Reversing a string sounds simple, but it can be deceptively hard. I'll tell you what interviewers are looking for, and we'll explore the two pointers pattern. This is Algo Daily. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the challenges portion of the Algo Daily Technical Interview Course. So, over the next few days and weeks, we're going to get some hands on experience with the essential data structures and algorithms that'll help you land your next software engineering job. The only way to get better at solving these kinds of problems is just to power through a few. And this one right here is one that interviewers love because it's seemingly easy. So, you'll get a prompt that's often as simple as, can you write a function that reverses an inputted string like A, B, C, D, E without calling the built-in string or array reverse method? So given A, B, C, D, E, a string containing these five characters, you want to flip them over. And so we'll end up with E, D, C, B, A as a string. So anytime we want to tackle one of these problems, we should always start with the basic example and kind of just get our feet wet with what exactly we're trying to do in a programmatic sense. So I like to always ask myself, when I first look at a problem, I like to always just run through a few simple test cases. And in this video, there's probably no easier one than just a simple string that we recognized, like Jake. J-A-K-E. And so this is our input, and this is our output, and we want to think of ways to get to this point. So like we discussed before, you could probably just call the reverse method on your favorite language and then call it a day. But that's probably not going to work for this interview problem because interviewers really want to test your ability to work with a basic data structure like an array. So if you think of strings as just character arrays, it kind of extends our ability to think about how to manipulate the input to get the output. And the reason I say this is because if you think of a string as an array containing elements that are one character each, so J is an element, A is an element, K is an element, and E is an element. And if each of these are array items, then we know that with an array, we can loop forwards. So we can start at index zero and start from here and then iterate through each element of the array. Or we can also start here and iterate backwards. And in most languages, you can directly iterate through the characters of a string starting from the back. So if we were to start our pointer of the for loop at the last element of the array or of the string, and at each element push it to a new array or concatenate it to a new string, we can start here and produce a string that ends up being E, K, A, J which is what we want. So you can see an example of that here, where we have a reverse string method that just starts from the very end. So we'll start from the end of the character array or the string. And our termination condition is the beginning. And what we'll do at each iteration is actually move the pointer down and decrement it. But of course, this wouldn't really be a fun algorithms challenge if we simply had to iterate from the back to the front. I think what most interviewers are looking for is a more sophisticated way of reversing a string. And the most common way that I've seen is to use two pointers. So remember what we learned in the two pointer technique. Two pointers just refers to having two variables, each one referencing a different index of either an array or a linked list or some kind of iterable data structure. And through the use of two pointers, we're able to 
speed up our operations quite a bit because we're, we have double the manpower. So here you can see that we have J, A, C, O, B as the string. So if we were to assign two pointers instead, we could have one pointer start at the front here, one pointer start at the back here. And what we could do is actually do a swap each time. So here we see J and B being pointed at. And then we flip, we swap them and we'll move the pointers in one more time. And then at this point, we'll move the pointers inwards and we'll swap those guys. And then at this point, we end up with our lone C in the middle, which we don't have to swap. And we get our reverse string. Let's analyze the reverse string method in its final form. So what we'll do is we'll take the input string. We're going to split it so that it becomes a character array an array of elements, each letter being a character. Then we're going to have a start pointer that initializes to zero, and this will be the first pointer. We'll have an end pointer that points to the last character. And this is the key. So we'll have a while loop. While the start is less than or equal to the end, while we still have the capacity to go inwards, we'll do a swap and then we'll increment start and decrement end. And then once we get to the middle and we're out of this while loop, then we can just take the output array and just join it to get the reverse strength.